All right, let's go. Hey, where's Edgar? Scripture of the day, meet Edgar. He's new. Welcome to Scripture of the Day. We're coming to you from City Hall, LA, and today's chapters, Isaiah 4 and 5. Now, I have one of my best memories of making videos is from Isaiah 5, and it was four years ago in Washington, D.C. So I guess we read through Isaiah every election here in America, but it was a video, Five Reasons for Woe to America. And if you've never seen that video, it's one of my favorite ones we've made. And I would encourage you to click on the link down below because I'm pouring out my heart for America in that video. But I want to go through Isaiah 5 with you right now. And I want to talk to you here in 2024. The election is coming up. It's not Joe Biden versus Trump. It's Trump versus Vice President Harris. Who's going to be our next president? Well, I want to talk to you about Isaiah 5 and not just like about our country. Let's talk about you and where you're at. Because the key word, the Hebrew word of Isaiah 5 is hoy, and it's the word that means woe. Woe is a pronouncement of judgment. If God says woe to you, you don't come back from that. And so I wanna go through these woes. These are the reasons God is going to judge his people. These could be reasons that God would judge you or he would judge me if we don't listen to his word. And so the first woe is pretty surprising here in verse eight of Isaiah five. It says, woe to those who join house to house, who add field to field until there is no more room and you are made to dwell alone in the midst of the land. And so why would you get a woe? Why would there be judgment for joining house to house and field to field? Well, I just wanna remind you that as we're going through Isaiah, there was another prophet that wrote at the same time. So if you can zoom in here on our prophet uh, timeline, you can see that Micah and Isaiah are next to each other there. They're prophesying to the southern kingdom of Judah at the time that the northern kingdom is about to get wiped out by Assyria. And so Micah in chapter two, Micah, he gives a very similar woe here. And the reason is because people are just looking for themselves in their houses. They're not concerned about meeting the needs of others. Uh, there's just a lack of care for their neighbors, the poor, the widow, the, the orphan. And so when it's all about you getting for yourself, and isn't that kind of the American dream? How much can I get for me? Well, woe to those who are in it for themselves and don't really care for others. The second woe here is this woe about drinking. Woe to those who rise early in the morning that they run after strong drink, who tarry late into the evening as wine inflames them. Why in the world, when drunk driving is such a problem in America, why in the world are liquor stores open 24 hours a day? because people want it early in the morning and late into the night. Whoa, that's a pronouncement of judgment. Drunkenness is debauchery. It's wasting your life away. Here's God pronouncing woe. But then as you continue to read through Isaiah 5, God just starts stacking the woes up, starting here in verse 18. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of falsehood, who draw sin as with cart ropes. Woe to those who are laying out the deception to make sin seem okay. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. We don't even call it sin anymore. No, now, now what is evil, we're saying that's fine. And what is good, we're saying you shouldn't do that. It says, woe to those who are wise in their own eyes 
and shrewd in their own sight. Woe to you when you're proud and you think you know better than God. I'll tell you, woe to some of the ads here on YouTube, okay? We don't monetize this channel, all right? We're not trying to make any money off this. We're just trying to inspire you to read the Bible. Right now, we're reading through Isaiah. But have you tried to watch videos on YouTube lately? All the ads are political. And I'm watching these ads with my kids, with my family, and it's like this person running for office, this person's evil, this person's terrible. Can you believe how bad this person is? What's so bad about this person? They're anti-abortion. That's what the ads are telling us. Don't vote for this person. They're evil because they are against abortion. Have you seen the ad that talks about how safe we are here in California? Here, I'm here in downtown LA. Do you know this is one of the safest places? And you wanna know why it's one of the safest places? Because no one can take away your right for abortion in the state of California. That's why we're safer than the other states. Can you imagine an ad here on YouTube that you're watching that tells you you're safe in California because you have the right, the right to abort a baby? That's calling evil good. Now, abortion is a very serious topic. God, he gives life, and he gives life at conception. And that is a that baby inside of his mother's womb has been created and formed there by God. And so to act like it's okay to murder a defenseless baby, see, that's when you're in it for yourself. And you just care about what you get to do. And you don't care about those who are defenseless like an unborn child. And so abortion is a very, it's not just a political issue, it's a personal issue. And it's, a, it's an issue of making a choice whether you're gonna do something that is good or that is evil. And our world today, America today, California today, LA today, we're saying you're safe here because you can abort your unborn baby. Your unborn baby is a soul made in the image of God. It should not be put to death. Can I get an amen from anybody on YouTube? Can we say that abortion is an evil thing? It's a wrong choice. And if that's something that you've done in the past, man, I hope you'll read through Isaiah where, hey, there can be crimson stains on our soul and God will wash them white as snow. Man, there are people at our church, we would love to talk to you if you did have an abortion in the past and you're trying to think through about that now in the present. There are people who would love to sit down and talk to you and tell you the gospel of God, the good news to, that can save your soul. So this is an example here on YouTube of how woe to us when we're calling evil good and good evil. But the point of Isaiah 5 is not just the woes. The woes are just the specific examples of why God's judgment is coming on his own people. The real problem is in verse 24. Why are all these woes happening? For they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts and they have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. There's that word for holy, kadosh in the Hebrew. See, they're not listening anymore. They're not taking to heart anymore what the Holy One says. So the reason we end up with all these woes, the reason we end up with all these problems in our nation, or the reason they had them in the nation of Judah and the city of Jerusalem, same reason we have these problems in LA today. We don't listen to the Holy One anymore. It's not just an issue with your conduct. It's an issue of your worship. Is God holy in your sight? Is God set apart? And therefore, whatever God says, that's gonna lead you down what is good. And whatever God says not to do, you're gonna stay away from that because that's evil. And you know why you're gonna do that? Because God is holy. And you wanna learn to be holy as he is holy. You have so much worship in your heart for the holy God. But these people, they don't worship a holy God. They despise him. They exalt themselves and they look down on God when really they should be humbling themselves. This is why chapter five with all the woes leads us right into chapter six. Because when Isaiah 
gets his vision of God and he sees him holy, holy, holy on his throne, what does Isaiah say, everybody? He says, woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips and I live in the midst of a people of unclean lips. See, this is why today I just wanna talk to you. Have you ever pronounced woe upon yourself? Have you ever said like Isaiah is going to in the next chapter when he sees the Holy One? Woe is me. I'm not trying to ruin your self-esteem or act like you're some especially evil person. I'm asking, can you see God who is holy? Because if you can see the Holy One, woe is me and woe is you. Like, have you ever pronounced judgment upon yourself and compared yourself to God's standard and realized that you have sinned and you have fallen short of the glory of God, that you, yes, might call yourself good when really you are evil. See, woe is me. Isaiah, he's the prophet. He's God's guy. Isaiah, he's the mouthpiece of God to the people of God. And he says, woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips. I know the most important moment in my life was when I realized woe is me before a holy God. And when I could see myself for who I was and see God for who he was. Do you see God as holy? Because our God is so high and lifted up in the heavens, he can do whatever he wants. In fact, in verse 26, it says, God can just raise a signal. He can just whistle and the nations from far away, they come at his beck and call. Like, God's just gonna whistle and here comes Assyria through to wipe out Israel and then Assyria is gonna come to Judah and that's what we're gonna pick up in chapter seven. King Ahaz is gonna be freaking out because here comes Assyria. You know why Assyria is coming? Because God whistled and this war machine of Assyria comes through. Later on, it's gonna be Babylon coming through. No, God, you gotta see him as holy and you don't want woe to be upon you from God because God can just bring in these other nations to wipe out Israel in the Northern Kingdom and then to come after Jerusalem in the Southern Kingdom. And so these woes are leading to what God's gonna do to bring his judgment. And so we're gonna see Assyria show up in chapter seven and then we're gonna get into the story of how Isaiah comes to King Ahaz. So we've got a lot to look forward to in chapter six and chapter seven. But first we gotta sit here outside of City Hall, me and you, and we gotta ask this question. Not a question for America, the nation, but a question for you as a soul before the Holy One. Have you ever said, woe is me? Have you ever said, I deserve to be judged because I'm evil and I can call myself good and I can try to deceive and I can act like everything's okay. But when I see the Holy One and I then look at myself, woe is me. I would love for you to leave a comment on this video and let me know the day that you realized it was woe to you. And I bet for a lot of you, that was the beginning of the best day, the day of salvation. Because when you saw yourself as a sinner and you saw God as holy, then you could see your need for the Savior. Remember, the name Isaiah means the Lord is salvation. And when you read Isaiah 6, we're not going to have a video because we're going to have a scripture of the ride interactive Isaiah experience at Fall Fest on Thursday night. But when you're reading Isaiah 6, after Isaiah says, woe is me, what happens? They bring with the tongs from the altar, one of the burning coals, and they touch it to the mouth of Isaiah. And guess what? His sin is atoned for. And then Isaiah says what? Here am I. Send me. See, after you pronounce woe upon yourself and you realize you should be judged, that's when you can see God's purpose, which is really not to judge you, but to save you, to save your soul, to bring you from evil to good. And so that's what happens with Isaiah when he pronounces woe upon himself. If you've ever pronounced woe upon yourself, has God saved you? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's share some testimonies. Let's t- share some testimonies of how being convicted about our sin before a holy God was both maybe the most terrifying thing that's ever happened and the most freeing thing that's ever happened. Because admitting that I had the crimson stain was how I got washed as white as snow. Come now, America. Come now to you, God says. Let us reason together. If you would pronounce woe upon yourself, then God won't have to judge you. He could come and save you. Let the Holy One be your salvation. Hey, we're just getting started in the book of Isaiah. So I'll see you for more 
here on Scripture of the Day.